In this video, I'm going to demo how to use the Polyquilt add-on in Blender 3D for retopology. It's intuitive with a gentle learning curve that makes what was once a tedious task a total breeze. Alright, so before we begin, we need to first set up our scene so that we can go ahead and retopologize the mesh. So first thing we need to do is head on over to our preferences and under get extensions, you want to search for polyquilt retopology tool. So once you go ahead and find that, make sure to install it. After that, let's now set up our scene. So I'm going to make sure that I come to the outliner here and I'm just going to turn on the selectable filter here and click on the base mesh that we have here so that I can no longer select it. So this is important to do. The next thing we want to do is just hit Shift A on the keyboard and create an empty mesh object. So once I've gone ahead and created a empty mesh object, I can now tab into edit mode and I can select the polyquilt tool. So what I've done is I've made sure to Set it to my quick favorites so that I can switch between the polyquilt as well as the polyquilt quad patch, which can be found right under it over here. So the next thing I'm going to do is enable snap. And I'll make sure that I snap the face here. And I'm going to hit N on the keyboard to bring out our end panel. And I'm going to click on tool to bring out our polyquilt tool here. So I'm going to make sure that I have snap on here as well. And before I go ahead and begin, I need to come up here to mesh edit mode. And under shading, I'm going to check retopology. This way we'll be able to see the mesh that we are drawing on top of this base. So now we are free to go ahead and start creating some geometry on top of this. All right, so let's take a look at some of the options we have under geometry. So the first option we have here is vertex. And what this is going to allow us to do is to draw points on the mesh. Now I'm going to make sure that I'm in vertex mode so that we can actually see the points that we're placing down. And by holding down shift, I'll be able to create some faces between the points that I've created. The next geometry type we're going to take a look at is edge which is going to allow us to draw edges on the surface of a mesh. So right-clicking is going to discontinue that. Left-click is going to allow us to draw on the surface and right-clicking is going to discontinue. And then again, holding down shift is going to allow us to use the brush tool to fill in the faces. Next, we have triangle, which essentially draws triangular faces. After that, we have quad, which is something we're going to use more often because it's basically going to help us build quad faces. And finally, we have polygon, which basically creates n-gons. And right-clicking is going to disengage and it's going to accept that shape that we just created. So that covers the different geometry types. Now let's take a look at how we can manipulate the geometry that we have created. So by just clicking and dragging, it's going to allow us to move these verts around. Same thing with the edges. We can just grab it and move it around. And we can also do the same thing for the face. So we can just slide this along the surface like so. Now you'll notice that you get an arrow when you hover around the middle of the edge. And if you click and drag, that's going to allow you to extrude. So we can extrude in basically any direction by just dragging on that. So all you have to do is hover over it. And once you see the arrow, you can go ahead and now just drag from there and it's going to create an extruded edge. So the next thing you can do with this is by holding down control, you can add edges to the faces that you've created and holding down control and shift will allow you to just erase edges like so. You can also click and hold on a vert and then drag towards the middle and that's going to allow you to create an inset. Clicking on a vert and then holding down and dragging along the edge is going to allow you to create a diagonal cut 
along the face. And another way in which you can create edges is by just clicking on an edge and holding for a second and then dragging. And that's going to create an edge loop on the surface. And that's just a few functions of the Polyquilt tool that we can use to manipulate some of the geometry that we've created here. Now let's take a closer look at extrusion. So I'll just go ahead and create a face over here. And under extrude, I'm going to select parallel. And what this is going to do is it's going to extrude an edge. And this edge is basically going to be parallel to the edge that we drew from. So for example, if I move this way, this edge is going to be parallel to this. So the extruded edge will always be parallel to the edge that we extruded from. The next one we have is bend. So this will just bend the edge like so. And the final option that we have here is flex, which is something that I use quite often, which allows us to just extrude details or rather extrude the edge around details like so. And we don't have to tweak the verts all that much. It kind of just flexes as we extrude around details like so. And when two edges come close to each other, we can either hold down the shift to create a face between them, or we can choose to just click on the edge and then drag it towards the edge that we have here, and it'll just merge them together. So let's try that again. So we can either choose to weld the words together, or we can just drag and have them sort of weld to each other like so. And that's pretty much all that there is to the extrude tool. The next thing I want to focus on is the brush tool. So we can access the brush tool by just holding down shift on the keyboard. So the brush tool can be used to either fill in faces or it's got a secondary function, which is to smooth out vertices. So we can just hold down shift and then click and just run the brush along the surface. And you can see how it's starting to smooth out these words that we have here. We can also select move here in the brush tool panel. And what this is going to allow us to do is kind of move areas of our mesh. And we can also adjust the size by just increasing the brush size here on the control panel. And that's going to give us a much bigger brush to work with. And we can also manipulate the brush strength. And that's obviously going to affect the intensity as well. And we can also increase or decrease brush size as well as strength by simply clicking and then holding for a second and then dragging side by side is going to affect the radius and then dragging up and down is going to affect the strength. So let's just try that out. All right, so I'm going to click and then drag to the right hand side and that's going to increase the brush size. And if I can click and hold down and then drag towards the left, it's going to reduce the brush size. Then holding down again and pulling it downward is going to decrease the brush strength. And so you can very dynamically control the size and strength by simply holding down shift and holding down the left mouse button and just dragging up and down or side to side to manipulate things. And the last brush option that we have here is delete which is going to enable us to essentially just delete faces as we kind of go over it like so. And that's just going to go ahead and delete a whole bunch of uh, faces that we had there. And that pretty much covers most of what the brush does. Now, the last thing I want us to shift our attention to is the quad patch tool. So let's go ahead and select that. Now, this tool is very handy if you need to fill large areas of your mesh with geo. So in order to use this, we need to ensure that we deselect everything. So let me go ahead and do that. And we need to now just highlight the edges that we want to extrude. 
and then just draw on the mesh like that by holding down the left mouse button and it's just going to connect that with a bunch of geo and we can continuously create geo just like this and that's pretty much all there is to the quad patch tool now that we've covered all the important features of the polyquilt and quad patch tool you are ready to start retopologizing your 3d models if in case you are new to the concept of retopology then watch my previous time lapse video complete head and ear retopology if the concept still eludes you I've got a real-time version along with the retopologized mesh for you to study from. It's available on my Gumroad store, the link to which can be found in the description of this video. And with that, I hope you learned something, and I'll talk to you in the next one.